My name is Mailani and I'm from Kona. I was born and raised there and it is my dream to one day work on Mauna Kea. And so in 2015, when TMT began its construction, there became this large social media presence of those who opposed it. And many felt that that was, I guess, the general consensus of what Native Hawaiians thought. And I had a really different opinion because I supported it um, as part of my lifelong goal to one day be a part of the astronomy community that is on Mauna Kea. And so I decided to start a petition online and I really was just, I guess, doing it for the, for the peace of my mind to say that I tried. Um, I never expected my voice to be heard and it really surprised me. <laughs> I, just, I just expected to, you know, share the link on my Facebook and have some friends and family sign it and, and that was going to be it. But I had set the petition live one night and I went to sleep and the next morning I woke up it was it was quite crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how was the response from uh, your fellow classmates? It was actually really awesome. Um, I actually just transferred to a new school for my last year of high school and I had many people that I I didn't know very well come up to me and just say that they thought it was really cool that I was speaking out and and putting myself out there and even those people that I didn't know very well but held different opinions of me, they're really respectful and I really appreciated it. Okay, so you feel like uh, you had people um, who sort of quietly agree with you, seeing that you were able to stand up and feel, um, I guess, inspired by that. Yeah, yeah, I really did and, um, you know, it was, it was nice to have their positive feedback and I wasn't expecting anyone to, I guess, jump up and, and along with me, I just wanted to get my voice and my opinion heard. And so to actually hear people backing me up was, was unexpected. And it, it ended up going international to, to places I've never heard of or never even dreamed of reaching to. And maybe someday I'll actually get to go there. But um, yeah, no, it, it just extended quite much further than I ever thought it would. And, and it was amazing to me. You know, I guess that's, that's what technology, the internet can do for us. It can take us to places far from where we are. Mm -hmm. So um, can you describe a little bit what, about what you do now? You know, have you mm -hmm. been able to continue that dream? And has, um, have the observatories here helped? Yeah, so right now I'm entering my third year of college at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. I'm studying applied physics with a concentration in astronomy and instrumentation. And this summer I've been interning for one of the observatories here um, in the Department of Engineering Technology and Information System Software. So it's been very, very eye-opening for me to see what is done. I, I never imagined it and and I love it. I absolutely love it. It's been keeping me so interested and, and seeing all the aspects of how the observatory works. It's amazing and, and I've got the chance to be up on Mauna Kea every week and every time I go up there it's special to me. Could you describe, I mean, for those who haven't been able to, ha to have the chance to go to Mauna Kea, mm -hmm. um, what does it feel like to go up there? <laughs> to me it just it feels like being in another world. I mean, it doesn't look anything like down here at sea level. And it's just, it's very breathtaking. I mean, other than the fact that there's only about 40% of the oxygen. <laughs> so, it's so it's literally breathtaking. It's literally breathtaking and, and just awesome. Um, this past week when I was up there, I just had a moment that I felt the absolute stillness up there and, and it was amazing. Um, I had the chance to observe a few nights last month and being up there at nighttime was just so peaceful. Driving back down at, at around 7 a.m. was just so serene. There's no other way to, to explain it. Like, it's just so peaceful and beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people in, in Hawaii uh, revere Mauna Kea. This is a special place for them. Mm -hmm. um, for you, um, it sounds like that 
experience that you that you have had, um, the sense of Mauna Kea being special, the telescopes are a part of that. Is mm -hmm. that um, fair to say? Yeah, you know, I think I grew up with the mindset that that they do coexist to me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the aspect of being Hawaiian and being an astronomer is what I would love to accomplish someday. And, you know, I guess the the environment that I grew up in and the way that my parents raised me had shown me both sides. And so I do believe they can coexist and I, I feel that I've experienced it. Um, you know, I mean, for both aspects, there's so much more for me to gain and learn in, in both ways. And so I hope that someday I will accomplish that. Okay, okay. How do you see astronomy, like amongst your, your neighbors, you mm -hmm. know, growing up in Hawaii, how did you see astronomy impact their lives? So where I grew up was in Kona was was pretty high up on the mountain and we would have clear nights almost every night and and you know it just really fed my inspiration and my family loved it too and all of our neighbors you know we we saw the same thing. To me it kind of shows a unity that there is that you know we we can all look up and see the same thing the same beauty of this this universe, you know, <laughs> um, and I mean, what something I've learned historically is that um, there were tsunamis back in the 60s that mm -hmm. really caused a lot of damage to Hilo, and um, as a way to help rebuild the economy, um, they reached out to universities and professors all around the world, um, saying that Mauna Kea could be a very amazing astronomy site and you know so today I while I've been living in Hilo for the summer I, I thought like what if that didn't happen what would be here you know I mean there's I think there's a lot that astronomy brings here as far as the scientists and the people it brings and um, as far as some of the scientists go you know they may be from other countries but they've been here working for an observatory for 10 plus years and this is what they call home. You know, it's very touching to me that people can, um, they can bring their heart here and, and also share it with me, like someone who's grown up here, even though they're from somewhere far away, completely mm -hmm. different, mm -hmm. but they still feel, I guess, that same love. But you, you've also seen um, many people, you've seen people here from Hawaii mm -hmm. who work in the observatories. Yeah, I've had the chance to really understand, I guess you could say, um, the system of things working up there, um, the people that, it, that are working up there every day, and um, they are locals, there are local workers up there. Um, as far as aspects of engineering to maintenance of the roads and the observatories themselves, um, the people who cook up there for the astronomers thing, like I love seeing them every time I go up there. They always welcome me with a very warm smile and, and make me feel very comfortable up there. They also have the best omelets in the world. <laughs> yes, they do, <laughs> especially when you're there at like 6 or 7 a.m. after exactly. a long night of observing. <laughs> so you have seen how, like tangibly, how local people benefit from, mm -hmm. from astronomy. Yes, I have. I have. And um, another thing is that many of the observatories here, they have outreach programs to educate kids. And I mean, I don't think there's any better way to teach kids to reach for the stars and reach for their goals than teaching them to look at the stars and, and literally reach for them. I mean, I'm the product of that. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's I mean, not every child is going to go to these outreach programs and say they want to be an astronomer, but it can always encourage them towards other careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. Now, as, as you acknowledge, there are, some, there are a wide range of opinions on, on TMT here mm -hmm. and on astronomy in general. Mm -hmm. And one of the kind of reoccurring themes that uh, we have heard is that, you know, if you are for astronomy, if you're for TMT in Hawaii, that was just because um, your view was shaped not by the Hawaiian view, but by the American view, mm -hmm. the view of the, the colonizer, the view of the, the outsider. Um, 
But it sounds very much like you have a different, completely different take on that. Yeah, you know, I think that nowadays people are very diverse, you know, whether it be as their ethnic side or where they come from or just experiences that they have while they grow up. Everyone becomes very, I guess you could say, unique in mm -hmm. their views. And so I do think that my view is unique and I don't, I never wanted to impose that upon anyone or claim that my view was casted over a certain group. I was just presenting it because I think that everyone can be different, but we can share similarities. And so I would hope that some people could relate to my views as being a Hawaiian, as being a local here, and as being a student pursuing astronomy. And I think that how I was raised was very unique because I had the chance to go to a really great school and I got to take Hawaiian language for five years. But at the same time, I got to take the science classes that I loved and um, experience the science side as well as the cultural side that is offered here on the Big Island. And so it w would be my hope that, you know, we're not all exactly the same, thinking on the exact same page, but perhaps agreeable. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be all about the science or all about culture, but you can have a, you can embrace both in a, in a yes, way. Yes, exactly. You know, I mean, I think that that's what makes us human is being able to draw from certain experiences and certain aspects, you know, embracing what we want, thinking about and pondering about what we want. And so I think that's what makes me uniquely me. And, um, and I think that it's a good place for me here to be. Yeah. And you've, you've seen other um, local, uh, local residents of Hawaii, you know, people whose families have been here for generations and generations and generations. Do you see some other, um, some other of your neighbors um, share some of your, um, some of your views? Yeah, I definitely have a few neighbors and, you know, just people in the community that I know that share similar ideas. And I mean, with that being said, I also have neighbors, family, friends, people I know that don't agree with me, you know, but I mean, that, that's nothing I can, I can do. I can just listen mm -hmm. and also convey what I would like to convey mm -hmm. and, and think about things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you were to talk to somebody who, um, again, has some concerns about astronomy or TMT, mm -hmm. from the standpoint, from the cultural standpoint, from the view that either you know, that Mauna Kea is sacred and therefore you can't build anything on Mauna Kea or that Hawaii is stolen and therefore nobody has the right to build anything there. Mm -hmm. um, how would you frame your response? Like how, how what would you say to, to somebody who, who has those concerns? You know, the big issue that has been brought up is desecration. And I went and I looked it up in the dictionary and desecration is the act of of being disrespectful or, or violent to a sacred place or thing. And when I thought about this, I thought about the intentions that these observatories have and the astronomers, the engineers, all those who work for it. And with my experiences with them, I believe their intentions are morally right. And so that, that's how I think, you know, I don't think their intentions are bad or harmful because they love and respect and revere the mountain also, just maybe just in a different way. That's why I don't see TMT as being desecration. I believe that it's morally right in its objectives to serve mankind in our search for knowledge and, and pondering about where we are in the universe. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I've taken away from the Hawaiian culture is that my ancestors, they were always very curious about the ongoing interactions around them in nature. And so this is a way to extend that. I mean, we're extending it past the sea and past the sky to the universe. Mm -hmm. And embracing technology as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Kalakaua <laughs> had 
had electricity in the, the palace before the White House did. Yes, I, it's, it's amazing, you know, and so just like hearing things about like that, it makes me so proud to be a Hawaiian that, that we've been a race of very innovative thinkers and we've been resourceful with what we have, sustainability that's such a big concept in the Hawaiian culture. And so I would, I would love for us to reach that one day. And I think that the telescopes, the observatories, they can really help us accomplish that with the knowledge that they bring, the education that they can extend to the communities here, as well as their economic contributions. Have you had the chance to meet anybody within, within TMT? Yeah, a couple summers ago, I was um, in California for a summer research position. And I had the chance to go to the TMT headquarters in Pasadena. And it was really, I felt very warm. <laughs> I, felt, I felt their aloha. And, and I, was, I was really nervous to meet them, you know, because many of them are very esteemed scientists and engineers. And, and it was just very genuine, like, to, to meet the people behind all this and also to realize that that they are humans too you mm -hmm. know many of them were very like they all carried water bottles they all told me about you know their families and and like it just I felt very relatable to them mm -hmm. and I wasn't expecting that you know and so it helped me to kind of connect with them that I could call them, you know, part of my extended ohana. What were some of their, their personal connections to the project? And, you know, how do they see uh, Mauna Kea? Mm -hmm. So I got to meet with some of the um, site testers and they told me how they were traveling around the world about 13, 14, 15 years ago and how at the time this idea was just maybe a seed, if that at all and they just told me how how passionate they were about their work to have it evolve this far in the years that it, it became their child that they nurtured to grow up you know and I think that's something many of us can relate to whether it be an actual child or just a dream or an idea that we have. Mm -hmm. So I guess finally what would you say to other um, people on on the islands who you know either they're on the fence or maybe they support uh, astronomy and TMT quietly um, what would you say to them my advice to them would be to just to stand tall in what they believe in you know I mean it's just I mean it's no easy issue of course but I think that with the right with the right handling mm -hmm. that this can all be peacefully settled in mm -hmm. some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And so to people that, that may not know quite where to stand, you know, I, I believe that it's very important to become educated about it and also to, to just listen to what, what you feel about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you.